Now, the data analysis process itself is actually split into four aspects. Uh, the first aspect is what we we'll call the data collection. Uh, the second aspect is the data preparation, aka the data cleaning. The third aspect is the actual data analysis itself. And the fourth aspect is data visualization or storytelling or communicating your insight now how accurate the insight you get from your data set is dependent on the quality of the data set that you had in the first place so that simply implies that if you have very good quality data set a data set that has been well prepared from the onset then the insights that you will get in the long run at the end of the analysis is going to be top notch and um, you know have this very high accuracy and that is the reason why when it comes to data analysis analysts pay a lot of attention to data cleaning and data preparation in fact as a data analyst you spend almost 90 percent of your time cleaning a data set because if you have a very good and well prepared data set you are going to be having a very good insight or a very good analysis now it's no news that when you gather data sets for the first time from a particular source or from a particular database, the data set is usually dirty. It has a lot of errors and some common mistakes in that data set. And your job as a data analyst is to clean and prepare this data set in order to get it ready for proper analysis. And that is where this video comes inside because in this video, I'll be teaching you how to clean and prepare your data set for you to be able to uh, let it be ready for proper analysis. Now, there are several tools out there that you can use to clean and prepare your data set. We have a couple of them. We have the likes of Microsoft Excel. We have Python. We have R. We have Power BI. But uh, this video will be focused on how you can use Microsoft Excel to uh to clean your data set now i'm not going to be touching power query like for now because that is like going to be like a bit of advanced in the context of this video so for this video i'll be teaching you how to clean a uh, data set using basic components of microsoft excel now it's not going to be a single video this is going to be like a series of video meaning i will start from the least or the simplest way to analyze data set and then i move up the uh the skill or up the ladder to the uh, more difficult or advanced techniques so that means uh in this first video we'll start with cleaning a very simple or small data set and then we'll move up the ladder to cleaning very huge amounts of data sets now uh i won't do this the normal way that uh other youtubers do where they will just give you a data set or they'll just bring up a data set and start analyzing it and showing you uh you use this you use that no uh my step will be a bit different in the sense that i won't just jump into preparing a data set right now i would be talking about the techniques in excel that we use to clean data set i'll be mentioning all of these tools such as uh, removing duplicate text to columns uh, trim function proper casing if error just to mention a few so i'll be mentioning all of these um techniques in excel that we use to clean data sets and how they work so after putting you through all of these uh techniques and all of the things that they can do then our next couple of videos will be about me applying these techniques to um to cleaning an actual data set so this first video of mine in this series is going to be about me talking on the techniques in excel that we use or the things in excel that we can use to clean our data set so without further ado let's get into it and learn about the techniques that are being used to clean data sets in microsoft excel so whenever you are given a data set for the first time most of the time you'll find yourself in situations where you see uh something like this this ash 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 all through your observations okay and it simply implies that the row the size of the row that you have at that point in time is unable to contain uh the values inside the cell so that means that if you if you hover around here you see that we have one one two thousand and twenty four or you can double tap it brings out the it brings out the date okay it simply means that uh this cell the width of this cell it can contains the value of the date that you have right here so one of the ways you can do this is just to like you know uh manually uh do this excuse me 
you can manually do this like this or you can double tap on this on this arrow right here so when this like once this uh arrow comes up excuse me yeah you can double tap exactly and it's it's uh it's kind of automatically fits in but what if if you have like a large amount of data set that has uh, multiple uh rows and columns and you don't want to be doing it manually all you have to do is to control a you know is to select all of this uh then you come to format uh you click on auto fit column width uh, okay so it's gonna be width because uh we are not working on the height we are all about the width of the row and once you click on that you see that uh, excel automatically fits uh uh the perfect width for each of the rows okay you can see that we have the same thing for dates we have the same thing for gender and uh, you know for height and you can just probably just shift this a bit and that's just it so this is one of the first step we usually take whenever we are trying to clean or prepare our data set okay now the next step is what we'll call the replacing now for replace it simply means that uh you want to you want to tell excel to look for a specific value or a specific variable and replace it with something else entirely like something new now this comes handy whenever uh, you're working on a data set and there's like a sort of like a mistake you can see these patterns of mistake okay uh let me double click on this okay yeah so you can see this pattern of mistake and you want excel to replace all of those mistakes with something that is correct so for example we can see that this gender right we can see we have f we have female we have female we have m so obviously it simply means that probably when they were filling this uh, questionnaire or something uh, some people filled f for female and uh, m for male and it's supposed to be a uh, male female only no no f no m so what you can do right here is to select this or you can just select this anyone is fine so let me just select this and then you come right here to find and select this option right here so once you click on this it has several options like several things you can work on which we still like talk about but we are interested in the replace which you can also press a control h as you can see for like a shortcut to get to the replace uh yeah the replace uh aspect of things so when you click on that now okay let me take this back okay now i can decide to click on f okay uppercase f all right so that's f okay give me a second this is all right f okay sorry okay shift f rather all right and then i want it to be replaced with female so what i'm trying to tell excel is that wherever you see f you should replace it with uh female now if i click on replace all you will notice something it says that all done we've made 11 11 replacements rather but when you click on this you realize that the where we have f in uh in our variable it has sort of like scattered the whole thing everything is not really making sense it's not really really making sense it's not it's not looking like what we actually want it to look like it has you know done some nonsense right here so let's control z and all you have to do to avoid such mistake is to come back here and uh, click on this option and click on match entire cell content and replace all and as you can see all done we have made four replacements and uh, if you go back to this you see that it has worked on it fine you know everything is all set so we have to just do the same thing for the mail because for the mail we have m all right so you just come here find and select replace so you replace the uppercase m with mails and you click on replace all and it has also it has also done for replacement and uh, as you can see we've replaced the f's with female and we've replaced the m with males now there are certain times whereby uh data can present itself in a in a very funny format let's say we have something like this uh, we have a bracket right here excuse me we have a bracket right here and uh let me just say we have a gender so let me say excuse me oh let me say right here we have brackets and then we have like let me say gender so probably there was a mistake somewhere and the person mistakenly did something like this all right so let's see all right so so you are interested in removing the bracket right here now if your data set was actually large like thousands of rows you can automatically be you know be removing 
the brackets gender but you want to use the replace function or the replace property rather to remove this gender all you have to do is to select this okay select this column come to find and select and replace now this time you would say you will open a bracket uh star and then you close the bracket and then you would do this and you will not put anything right here. now if you click on replace all it gives us this error we couldn't find anything to replace click options for more ways to search so all i have to do is to unclick this and click on replace all and it has already made uh two replacements and that is uh the I think this cell here the first cell here and this cell here and that's just how you use the replace now the next is uh, a technique that is very popular and in fact sometimes it's it's the first thing you do whenever you are trying to prepare your clean your data set before you do the auto row with okay auto fit row with right so it's what we call the checking for duplicate uh this is the data set i'm using let me double click on these okay yeah so we want to check for duplicate values now there are actually uh i won't say two ways sort of but you can first of all use what we call the concept of conditional formatting to look out for duplicate and then you can use um the checking for duplicate uh property to actually check for duplicate and also remove the duplicate so let us start with us using conditional formatting to check for duplicate now you can select all of this and then uh conditional formatting the highlighting cell rules and then duplicate values and once you click on that all right so automatically excel is saying that uh all of those in red are actually duplicate values and should be removed now this might be wrong because obviously all of this can be the you know the duplicate values they can be du like duplicate values but then if you click on ok you can see that excel is saying that all of these are duplicate values for some weird reasons uh the other way you can do this is to select all of this you come right down to data uh you can see remove duplicate right here and uh it brings out this uh sort of like dialog box and asks you the columns that you want excel to look into to remove duplicate and uh, you can remove whatever thing you want to do and you click on ok and it tells me that no duplicate values are actually being found so it's a bit contrary because uh, when i use the um the conditional formatting uh technique it's sort of telling me that um you know the duplicate values are, are everything highlighted in red uh, let's see if we can use another color uh let's see yellow okay exactly yeah so but then when we use uh the check for duplicate function it's actually telling us it's actually telling us that we don't have any duplicates in our data set which i sort of like agree to we really do not have any duplicates so if you use the removing duplicates uh in your data set uh like this it's going to like check for it and uh, it's also going to delete the duplicate but let's see if we have duplicates in age let's see that all right so okay 11 duplicates were removed 11 unique values so it's removed those values that are repetitive that repeats themselves so ctrl z so it means that uh those values that repeat themselves two times like uh this 23 and 23 it's going to remove one of them this 26 and 26 is going to remove one of them you can also do the same thing for uh gender if you do that for gender it's uh, excuse me uh remove duplicate all right let's do this uh gender all right it's going to remove all of the males and we're going to be having just one male and one female let's try that you see it's the same thing so it's literally removing those things that are repeating themselves so whenever you want to use this um whole thing be very careful and be very mindful make sure that you select all of the variables so that it can tell so ctrl z exactly so this is how you check and uh, remove duplicate so the next aspect of data cleaning or the next techniques that or the next technique rather that we use when it comes to data cleaning is the concept of removing unnecessary spacing in our data set okay okay so once you take a closer look at this you will see that uh right here i have um okay let's double click on this right here i have the names i can have jacob owen you know we have some unnecessary spacing and all in between the names either before the names or after the name you know stuff like that so 
how do you remove all of those spaces and just let everything be uh the right way it's supposed to be so all you have to do is to first create a new column so we call this full name okay then we can double click on this all right so we are going to be using a trim function to get those values or to get the spaces out of these values rather so uh we use the trim function is equals to T R I M. okay and then you select one of that you click on enter and then you can double tap this or you can just drag it down anyone uses actually fine oh okay, let me just do this or you can drag this down like this anyone it's fine okay now you will notice that it has actually removed all of the spaces that we have right here and it's as simple as that so the next is for us to work on the casing okay now that reminds me we might want to delete this okay now you notice that when you click on this and you delete this it's obviously affects this and goes out too so all you can do is to copy all of this and then you paste this okay you know what let's copy all of this so let's copy all of this ctrl c and then you paste it as value excuse me uh you paste this as values okay exactly and uh, when you delete this it will not be affected you see that uh the full name it's not affected and that is just it like that so this way we are pasting the values we are pasting everything we have right there with the values as values rather without making reference to the formula as simple as that so the next is for us to do with what we we'll call the casing Thing. all right so uh basically let me just uh totally do a bit of cleaning let's delete this and we paste this oh excuse me all right let's come right here ctrl c and then we have the ctrl v right here all right so we can see that uh the casing of this uh names right here it's not really well made you know some are starting with the lower case some are starting with the upper case and all of those stuff so we basically have three types of casing we have the upper casing we have the lower casing and we have the proper casing so for the upper casing it simply means all of the letters in your variables are all upper cases and by lower cases or by lower casing rather all of them are lower casing and um by proper casing it simply means that if you're having a name then uh the first letter that starts a name or a sentence is in uppercase. So let's try to do uh, the full name for lowercase first. So the full name. Okay. Uh, let's do this. So we can say you can use lowercase. So you press is equals to lower. Okay. And then you click on this and you click on enter. Okay. And you double tap. And immediately uh, you'll be able to see that all of the names has been kept in lowercase. Everything in lowercase. Uh, if you want this to be in uppercase, excuse me. Yeah. Uppercase. If you want this to be in uppercase. Yeah. Exactly. So let's just take this as uh, F. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. If you want this to be in uppercase, all you have to do is uh, equals to upper and uh control excuse me enter and then uh you you can drag it down or you can double tap on that so and this is everything in uppercase as simple as that okay now the next is for you to do a proper casing so that is going to be full name okay so something like this excuse me yeah exactly so uh you is equals to then you write proper all right then uh you can click on this enter and then you can just double tap this or you can drag it down and this is how you do your casing as simple as that okay now that's just it now the next step that we can take when it comes to cleaning is how we can uh convert a text to a column so let's come back to this and let's assume that we are interested so let's delete this okay uh let's copy this exactly ctrl c all right so let's bring this here so let's say we are in oh my goodness i right, made a mistake all right let's copy so let's copy it and let's paste it as uh values okay all right that's fantastic yeah so let's assume that we want to like split all of this okay so we are interested in letting 
Jacob be here, like let's say Jacob, and then we want Owen to be here, you know, something like this. So we want to do this. Uh, we can use the text to column feature. So all you have to do is to select this, okay? Then we come to data, and you can come right here to text to columns, okay? So it asks you what do you want to use to, you know, split it now characters such as comma or tab separate fields or something so you can also use the fixed with something so i'll be choosing the delimited okay and uh, you can see a preview of everything right here so next and it asks you what is your what is this um, variable separated with as you can see the names are separated with a space so i click on space all right and it gives you it gives you like uh um uh, like a preview now i don't want the full name to be affected i just want like i don't want the header to be uh, affected so let me just select all of this okay exactly and then i think you can also do that from uh okay exactly next exactly so that's fantastic now so this is a preview and uh, i click on next and uh, you know i'm okay and i click on finish and immediately you can see that uh it has actually split the whole thing for us so we have jacob on the left we have owen on the right and we have that so uh, basically we can just call this name excuse me we can call this the first name and uh, we can call this the last excuse me the last name okay now as simple as that okay so that's just it it's actually that simple so we can also work on blanks okay how do we work on blanks all right let me select all of this and um to fit this so let's come right here uh okay so i would like to delete this okay should i delete this okay let me not delete this so let's just leave this this way now uh we can see that we have some blank values right here and uh all i have to do is i want to like pay attention to the blank values now I, so we come right here to go to special and you will see uh some special things right here then you click on blank and once you click on blank and okay it shows you uh the blank cells now like where are the blank or the empty cells now i want to place uh like uh, a null no value or something to show that this is actually a blank cell in excel now if i have a very small data like this i can just you know just say n a n a and i put n a right here you know i can do that uh manually but if i have uh, excuse me now if i have large amount of data set and i want to like do it with excel so i have to select all of this automatically then um go to special blanks and okay then i come right here i write uh n a as you can see i made sure that the cells are, are still alighted okay so instead of clicking on enter i click on control enter and as you can see automatically excel uh made sure that all of the blank cells are uh replaced with na which means a uh, non-appearance okay now now the last part is what we call the if error and this is basically uh something you see when you are working with uh, a bit of calculations in excel meaning uh if you have some error attached to a cell and you don't want excel to put that error so you know you can just uh, use the if error statement or sentence rather to manipulate the way the error is being uh displayed so let's assume we have something right here let's say we have like weight and then we have like height right here so the weight can be let's quickly just get some values in kg let's say we have 78 uh we have 56 we have 90 we have uh, 65 we have 70 and uh, we have less than 90 again now i won't like feel like feeling all of this so let's say the height so we have our height in meter so let's say we have a uh, 2.31 here we have like uh 1.97 here then we can put like 2.03 here or 2.04 rather then we can have like 2.00 so what i'm trying to do right here is i want to calculate what we'll call the okay let me just put this right here 2.10 so I want to calculate what we call the BMI. So that is a uh, the body mass index. I think that is uh, the full meaning. Uh, yeah, 
exactly so it's called a, a body mass index it's used to uh, check how healthy you are it's so the formula is basically uh the weight divided by the height squared so let me see bmi okay now so i'll just create an excel formula that calculates the weights so that's uh that's uh, gonna be brackets that's uh this divided by so that's the height so let me say this raised to the power of two okay now if i drag this down here okay you will see that there are some error right here so this error right here i want to remove it in my data set because i don't want this error to show so what i'm gonna do is uh to come right here and put in the equality sign sorry excuse me and say if error so excuse me uh so if error okay so i click on this value i click on this so it simply means that if i have a value it should replace like it should repeat the value and so we can just put like uh apostrophe and then we can put na right here okay then we click on enter and we can drag this right here and you'll notice that it fills in this with na instead like meaning non value or i can edit this and uh, i can decide to just remove this and click on enter and once i do that excel automatically does not put anything right here and that is how you use the if error functions so uh i've given you like i think uh five or six i think one two three four like eight of them eight techniques that we use to format data in microsoft excel so we can also have other ones like how to create a table so i can control a everything right here okay let's say something like this control a and uh i can create a, ta a table i can press control t okay yeah exactly and automatically excel sort of like add filters and then also do a bit of formatting for me right here so that is another way of you know in quotes preparing and cleaning your data sets you can also excuse me uh, i can also remove the grid lines i click on view and uh remove the grid line okay yeah exactly oh data is it data then remove the grid lines uh, which is here as you can see so this is actually best used or this is needed whenever you are trying to make a report like a dashboard or something so we can just control z on that we can also do some basic date formatting so that means you can click on this you come to home and then when you come to dates uh excuse me you can click on short dates you can click on long dates you know you can just format the date based on what you think you need right now now you can also do what we call the spell check which simply means um basically you can select all of the uh data exactly and then you come to uh data or you come to view rather you come to review and you can come to spelling okay so right here you are telling excel to help you check for errors and uh, you know you can do everything you want to do you can say you know what whenever you see assist uh, add to this dictionary change change all you know just pick everything that suits you and all of those stuff so excel is seeing this name right here as something wrong and it's trying to tell me to change it into something like assist or assist at assist or assist or something so you can ignore or you can change or you can change you know you can even choose the language that you want depending on you so let's just ignore all of this ignore all ones and you know just that's just it and these are the basic excel cleaning technique that we have now if you learned something new from this video and you enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up and uh, also subscribe to this youtube channel do you think i missed something or you have some questions for me uh please don't hesitate to go down to the comment section and drop your questions i would be willing and be ready to attend to all of them i would like you to uh stay tight keep calm and wait for the next video where i would be analyzing uh a proper data set using all of the techniques that we learned right here you know properly so i see in the next one uh if you want to learn how to analyze data sets properly i actually have a video right here that i would be linking that would help you out so you can just check that out i uh, will see in the next one and bye for now